my name is Vanya Garay, and um, I'm currently director of research and leader in design at the Brunel Design School. Um, today I'm going to talk about, uh, I also lead a research group called Brunel Digital Design Lab. And we like to say we specialize in design-led technology innovation, which then applies to all kinds of different contexts, uh, including digital and digital physical systems, product services and experiences. And in the last few years, we were, we, we were quite successful in engaging in research projects to do with uh, immersive technologies. So we participate in a sequence of projects called, uh, labeled uh, under the brand Story Futures. The first one was Story Futures, then there was Story Futures Academy. And Story Futures Ch China is the one which we actually lead here at Brunel. They're all funded by Arts and Humanities Research Council. The long title is the full title. Story Futures China stands for UK China Transnational Strategic Partnership for Immersive Storytelling in Museums and Cultural Institutions. So, on this project, uh, which started in 2020 and will finish, I think it's end of April next year, we worked uh, with a number of partners. Uh, the main academic partner here in the UK is Royal Holloway and the main kind of industrial partner is the National Gallery. Then we also have a, a design agency called Arcade. Uh, and then in China we work with the College of Design and Innovation at Tongji University and two large museums there, Shanghai Science and Technology Museum and the Natural History Museum. Plus there is a development company uh, which kind of specializes in design and development of, of museum experiences across China. They're called Shanghai Formos Group. Um, so that's the, just an image of the National Gallery. And then uh, the large museum, the first museum. We started working with them and then as the project developed we kind of transferred to working with the Natural History Museum which is part of the same group. Um, and the overall kind of aim of the project, this is one of, I think, seven projects which were funded um, to kind of try to promote collaboration in creative industries between the UK and China. They were funded in 2019. We are um, one of the two which are related to the heritage sector. The other one works, includes Tate Modern, so it's a slightly different take on things. But the idea was to look into how to develop some kind of strategic framework which would enable this collaboration between the UK and China to continue and uh, grow, uh, especially because <coughs> uh, the research between the two countries in that area is also going to continue. Arts and Humanities Research Council are planning to uh, create what they call Creative Industries Hub in um, Shanghai. And this project is one of the projects which is going to is used as a pilot to kind of so that we can see how things work if we try to engage in collaboratively in kind of collaborative co-design uh, co of you know creative content between the two countries. Uh, we are also looking into what opportunities there may be, um, and we have four lines of inquiry. The first objective was to create some new immersive cultural experiences, uh, which is the focus of the talk. I will show them uh, in a minute. Uh, and then we are looking into what kind of business models there may be to actually make the UK cultural industry and creative industries do more business in China and the other way around. Um, we are looking into similarities and differences in terms of what people like when it comes to going to museums and galleries in the UK and in China. And the idea is to see whether we can have some kind of a transnational UX model. Um, we're looking into quite detailed understanding of um, how audiences relate to uh, digital content in museums and galleries and in particular to the immersive technologies. And so <coughs> I'm now going to move to presenting what that, that experience which was created for um, 
the National Gallery, uh, and that's one of the three outputs, creative outputs of the project. So it, this is an AR game which is called the Keeper of Paintings and the Palette of Perception. Which can, uh, the game is um, aimed at children 7 to 11 years old. It was developed with um, the education department of the gallery. It took about a year of a number of co-creation sections, which, uh, sessions which included children from a number of schools um, around London. And then we had some very brief um, checkups with a smaller group of children as the, the idea was being developed. Um, you can play it in the gallery until end of April again. So it, it will be, uh, it's, it's a sort of MVP and it's on trial for one year. It was launched uh, for East, uh, during Easter weekend this year. Um, and yeah, I think uh, <coughs> the idea was to look into something which would entertain, but at the same time motivate children to learn about history of art, the collection in the gallery, which is one of the greatest in the world. Um, and the Keeper of Paintings, as the title, is actually inspired by the traditional role of the keeper of the gallery, which stands for the head curator, somebody who has the responsibility to protect the paintings for the future. The work in, involves quite a lot of conservation work. Um, and it's a very, th this role is quite a sort of, um, <coughs> you know, significant role. There were just 17 keepers in the, in the history. We, had, we were lucky to have Larry, who is the current keeper in our project, kind of on, on our advisory board. This is one of the, we, we started the project, unfortunately, at the beginning of the pandemic. It was uh, launched in February 2020. So <laughs> most, <laughs> basically, there was a, a series of visits being planned to go to China and they, they were supposed to come here, but we had to do everything online for two years. And uh, <clears throat> I think the idea took about six months to develop uh, and then another, you know, quite a long time to actually fine-tune into something which became a playable game. Uh, this is also the same person when he was advising George Clooney on uh, the script for The Monuments Man, which is an interesting movie which was inspired by some past keepers of the gallery. Um, and the game basically, you use the phone as, a, as an eyeglass and you are the assistant to the keeper who is on a mission to navigate the gallery and complete a number of tasks to kind of protect the paintings and then also um, learn about them in the process. So um, this is just a simple demonstration of what happens. You most of the, well, there is more than 100 paintings which were kind of made recognizable by the app. And in many cases, th there are about 12 rooms in the gallery which uh, you can go through and uh, interact with paintings uh, and try to kind of complete those tasks. If you make a mistake and the painting is not the right painting, then the phone kind of still recognizes it and, and directs you to, you know, try again. Um, this is the map which shows which way a child should move around. And some of the tasks are actually uh, meant to be played in a group. And it was, you know, the, 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 the game dynamics also includes certain parts where you're supposed to get off the phone and just do certain things in real life. So we wanted to balance digital with physical. Uh, we got some very interesting reviews. The game was listed uh, as the fourth on the list of 10 best new art shows and experiences that can be booked in the spring this year. In the, that was in the Times uh, Culture section, Sunday Times. So that was the first step. The next step was then to, we said that we would look into how these projects could be sustained. And um, be, be, you know, we, we started looking beyond the actual keeper of the gallery into what could become a larger ecosystem. And as a result, um, the agency which works with us proposed to develop this whole concept of the Keeper Council, which would then include curators of other museums. 
and then that became that then became a Roblox game, which could now be which can now be played um, on Roblox, and in which the keeper of the gallery brings in the paintings, digitalized versions of the paintings from the gallery. But there is also somebody from the museum in China meeting in the same space, digital space. So that's how uh, the whole thing is called the keeper council. And again, as you assist the the keeper in the gallery, in the physical world, on Roblox you have to help them in this fictional digital space where <coughs> there are those masterpieces digitalized and embedded and if you then complete the tasks you win some paintings and you can uh, develop your own kind of museums and galleries. That's the starting point. But um, in China, so I, I, I tried to play and I won this uh, Rousseau's painting, which is quite a famous one. <laughs> and uh, then uh, in China, the company which was hired to work with us there is working on the Keeper of Birds because um, the museum in Shanghai is a natural history museum. So they have a large collection of birds which they wanted uh, to kind of involve in the whole kind of ecosystem. So there, uh, the keeper of paintings was, be became the keeper of birds. And um, just to finish off, this is the, 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 the agency which was basically, which won the, we had a competitive tender in which we selected the creative agency to do the development for the project. So that's the agency which worked on most of the creative things. Um, so, and just to kind of conclude, how does that relate to policy? I think, as I said before, this is a, a pilot of a collaboration which is quite complex between cultural institutions in China and the UK with the idea to, first of all, feed to that permanent creative industries hub which is, would facilitate uh, this type of exchange between, between the two countries. Um, and, you know, we're looking into what the opportunities there are, for example, we can see that the UK institutions are very much interested to export their cultural products, but the Chinese institutions are, or the companies, are more interested to actually sort of work with the UK companies and benefit from imp helping them import into the large Chinese market and make money that way. So they're not so much interested to kind of bring their products to the UK. They want to facilitate the entry and somehow co-brand the culture, you know, those products and, and have them, you know, sold across China, which is a big market. So, yeah, I think this is where I, s that I finish here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you.